couple of weeks ago, I built myself a brand new TrueNAS core server and went through all the installation steps to get it up and running. But today is the day that I've been waiting for, as it's finally time to migrate all of my data from my old FreeNAS box onto the new hardware. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to do that. Let's get started. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. And as I said in the intro, it is finally time to start migrating all my data. And not a moment too soon, as my current FreeNAS box is about 88% full. So let's get the show on the road. We're gonna start off by taking a look at the hardware that runs in my current FreeNAS box. And while it's no slouch with an i3-8100 and 32 gigabytes of RAM, it's also kind of the bare minimum for what I needed my server to do. You see, FreeNAS, and by extension, TrueNAS Core, because those are now the same program, requires eight gigabytes of RAM to run the actual OS, and then an additional one gigabyte per terabyte of raw storage that you plan on managing with the NAS. And while you can run with less, there are benefits to having more memory. And my system is pretty much right at the bare minimum of what I should have, as I only have 32 gigabytes of RAM, but 36 terabytes of raw storage. Transfers that used to fly along at 600 megabytes per second are now in the 250 to 300 megabyte per second range, because I am starting to push the limits of my system memory. If this was just me copying files onto it for storage needs, well, I can probably live with the extended wait time. However, I also edit my videos directly off of the NAS, so performance is paramount. In this free NAS install, I've been running six six terabyte drives in a RAID Z2 for a two disk parity to help protect the data while it's on the server. But remember, RAID is not a backup. As you can see down here in my storage pool, I only have about 2.4 terabytes out of my 20 terabytes of actual space. But it's finally time to give that data a brand new home on my TrueNAS build. And if we click over to that tab, you can see my new server has 128 gigabytes of ECC registered memory, as well as two new storage pools, a 40 terabyte and a 15 terabyte. Today, we're gonna to transfer everything from my existing 20 terabyte drive pool onto the new 40 terabyte drive pool using ZFS replication. Once that transfer is complete, I'm also gonna show you how to migrate the disks themselves from one install to another, and then import them as a new storage pool while keeping all of your data intact. So we're gonna start off over here on my old FreeNAS box. I'm gonna go over to Tasks, and I'm gonna go down to Replication Tasks. I'm gonna to go to the upper right-hand corner and click on Add, and then I'm gonna select a source location, which is the data I want to transfer. So we're gonna click on Source Location and then click on On This System. Right here, you'll see a pull-down menu, which includes all of the storage pools on your system. And in this case, we're gonna back up my storage storage pool. I know, clever naming system. Over on the right-hand side of the window, we're gonna click on Destination Location and then select On A Different System as I'm moving the data from this server to another server. ZFS replication on FreeNAS and TrueNAS systems takes place over SSH, so we are gonna set up a new SSH connection. We're gonna name this craft-truenas-12, which is the name of my new TrueNAS server. Since we're migrating from FreeNAS to essentially FreeNAS, we're gonna select semi-automatic. Then we're gonna enter the URL of our target system, which in this case is gonna be https colon slash slash 192.168.1.226. Username is root and the password is whatever your password is. Then right underneath that, we're gonna create a new private key which will help protect our SSH connection. Then we're gonna click on create SSH connection. Now in this pull down menu, you should be able to see all of the storage pools in your target FreeNAS server or TrueNAS server as it were. So I'm gonna click on the 44 terabyte RAID Z2 and I'm gonna put that in a new directory called storage. And then later on, I'm actually gonna split out all of my data into separate data sets. Next up down here at the bottom is SSH transfer security. And using this, you can actually select to encrypt your data while it's in flight during the replication between the two servers. In pretty much every instance you would ask me, I would recommend replicating with encryption turned on. However, as I'm here in my home network and this is a one-time transfer, I'm just going to select no encryption as it will run a little bit faster. And before you ask me if you should turn on encryption for the data in flight, you know your environment better than I do. And if everything looks good, go ahead and click on next. Next up is the what and where menu, and this is where you actually set up a schedule for your replication. Now, in my case, I am only going to be running this once as I am transferring the data from one server to another, and then I'm gonna decommission the other server. But if you wanna set this up as an everyday backup or even an hourly backup, you could totally make that happen here. By default, if you do click on run once, it will make the data set read only. However, I'm going to uncheck that as I will be moving this data into other data sets once the transfer is complete. Down below that, you can configure the lifetime for snapshots you're transferring to the new server. In my case, I'm gonna leave this as same as source because I will be setting up a new snapshot policy on this new TrueNAS server. And if everything looks good, you can click on start replication. However, that's a little misleading as it doesn't actually start the replication. 
And no, I take that back. Mine is already running. If yours doesn't run and it says pending right here, you can click this little down arrow right here and then go over to run now and that will start the replication process. There are a couple different ways you can check on the progress of a replication, as even over 10 gig networking, mine is gonna take quite a while. First way is to go up to the task manager right here and see the overall percentage. The other way is to go over to your destination server, click on storage, click on pools, and then see if your new data set has been created. And in fact, mine has been created and already has 32 gigabytes of data transferred. The really nice thing about using ZFS replication to transfer all of your data from one ZFS host to another is that this is not a file level transfer. This is a block level transfer. If I were to migrate this data with Robocopy or SCP, then I would be doing a file level transfer, which has to actually read each individual file and then copy the contents to a new location on the new drives. However, with a block level transfer, it's just taking the raw zeros and ones and flinging them over, which means it'll pretty much run at full speed all the time. And refreshing again, we can see we've already got 65 gigabytes of data transferred. So this is gonna take a couple hours probably for me, but it's still gonna be a pretty quick transfer, even for 18 and a half terabytes worth of data. One thing to keep in mind with ZFS replication though, is this will only replicate snapshots. That is a snapshot of a moment in time. ZFS replication is not a real time transfer utility. What that means is I can't continue writing data on my source server and have it automatically move over to my destination server without taking another snapshot and then replicating that snapshot over. Now snapshots work by recording the block level differential. What that means is that anytime you change a file, you're only changing certain zeros and ones within that file, such as saving changes to a Word document. When you're doing a replication task or a snapshot task, all you have to copy is that differential data. You don't actually have to copy the entire chunk of data or the entire file. So if you wanna transfer differential data over, not only do you need to take a new snapshot, but you also need to have your replication task run after that new snapshot has been taken. The nice thing is all of this can be automated through the use of snapshots and the ZFS replication utility inside of TrueNAS. Since this is gonna take a little while, I'm just gonna let the replication process finish up overnight. We'll come back to it tomorrow. I'll verify that all the data has been transferred, and then I'll show you how to migrate the actual physical drives from one server to another. So we'll see you after the break. So I lied, it is actually two days later. The transfer went off without a hitch. However, it did take around 20 hours to complete. And by the time it finished yesterday, I didn't have time to film this follow-up because I was doing other things. But let's get to that right now. So the first thing we wanna do is actually verify the copy, make sure that our data actually made it from one server to the other server. Otherwise, what's the point of all this? So I went ahead and mapped both of the share directories. Over here on the left-hand side is my original FreeNAS share, and over here on the right-hand side is the brand new TrueNAS box. And as you can see, all of my directories moved over just fine, but how do we verify the data is actually there? Now there are a number of different methods to compare the differences between two directories. However, I'm gonna use a tried and true method and that is using FC or file compare that is baked inside of Windows. The setup for this is pretty simple. We're gonna map my FreeNAS directory as the Z drive. Then we're gonna open that in a command prompt and type in dir forward slash s and then we're gonna pipe that output to 200.txt. What this does is list the entire directory contents recursively and then output it to 200.txt. Why 200.txt? Well, that's the IP address of my FreeNAS server. And just know, depending on the size of your directory, this does take a couple minutes to chew through. However, even at 18 terabytes, this should only take three or four minutes on my system. And there we go. A couple minutes later, we have a 38 megabyte text file. Now to get the directory contents of the new TrueNAS server. To minimize the number of differences, we're gonna map the TrueNAS server as the same exact Z directory. And now we're gonna type in dir slash s and then pipe the output to 226.txt. So the files are slightly different sizes. We have 38,438 in the FreeNAS server and 38,798 in the TrueNAS server. It's a little weird that the TrueNAS server is slightly larger than the old FreeNAS server from which it copied all its files from. But oh well, let's take a look at the differences. So I have copied both files to the same location and now we're gonna type in fc 200.txt, 226.txt, and then we're gonna pipe that output to output txt. What that will do is create a new text file right here with all of the differences between the two. And that one didn't take long at all. As you can see, the text file is only 126 kilobytes. And if we scroll through it, you can see the majority of the differences are fairly minor. So in this instance, there's a thumbs.db in this directory. However, there's not a thumbs.db in that directory. Thumbs.db is just the thumbnailing tool for Windows to preview documents inside of a file. So the presence of one versus the other really doesn't matter. 
There's also a couple minor things like directory creation time. You can see it's off between these two directories. Uh, there's a Excel temporary file right there and it's not present in the other one. Again, very, very minor differences that really aren't consequential to the security and integrity of the data that I copied. So all in all, I would call that method a success. Now there is one other method to transfer your files from one server to another, and that is actually moving the hard drives from one server to another. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now that we have all the drives moved over, how do we actually import that storage pool into TrueNAS? Well, we're gonna start out by going over to the Storage tab and clicking on Disks. As you can see right here at the top, we have six unused disks, which are all of the drives that I just moved over. Now that we've confirmed they are all showing up, we're gonna go over to Pools and then click on Add. Now instead of creating a new pool, we're going to import an existing pool and then hit Next. Before continuing, TrueNAS will ask you if you used any encryption on your drives previously. If you have, you will need to decrypt them before you can complete the import process. In my case, I did not encrypt my drive, so we're going to click on No and then click on Next. And finally, in the pull-down menu right here, we can see the Craft Storage Pool. So I'm going to click on that and then click on Next. It'll ask you to confirm the settings, and if everything looks good, go ahead and click on Import. Once that's finished, you'll be taken back to the pool screen and you can verify that the import was successful. And in my case, here is the craft storage pool and right below that is the storage data set with all 18.56 terabytes of my data. And with that, that's gonna wrap up today's tutorial. As always, if you liked this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. If you're curious about any of the hardware that I used in this video, make sure to check out the Amazon affiliate links down in the video description below. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing, and if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support what I do, make sure to join the Patreon. A minimum $1 donation will get you access to my exclusive Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads, my once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today, I do have pretty high hopes for. However, I've been thoroughly disappointed by the beers from Kansas I've drank so far. So today it is Kansas Territory Brewing Summer Breeze Lemon Shandy. It is a 5.3% Rattler and wow, that's a uh, pretty hot can there. <laughs> I think there's a little carbonation in that. What do you think? Uh, it's like John's pour in this one. I guess I'm drinking foam. That's kind of an interesting flavor. I'd like to drink the beer to find out though. We'll get to it eventually. Hey, we finally got it all in there. All right. All right, first impressions now that I've drank about 12 ounces worth of foam. This is supposed to be a, a lemon shandy. And for those who don't know, a shandy is a mixture of either juice or soda and beer. So oftentimes you'll see a pale ale or a pilsner or a lager mixed with like a grapefruit soda, like squirt or something like that. And it's called a shandy or a rattler. Now a shandy in particular is lemonade mixed in with a beer, but it's still technically a rattler. So this is supposed to be a lemon shandy, but I'm smelling a lot of grapefruit. There's not a lot of lemon on the nose or lemonade or anything like that. Um, I'm getting more of like the hops on the nose and, and that's kind of tricking my brain into thinking grapefruit, but the taste is exactly what I would want out of something like this. It's very smooth, yet still very crisp and very refreshing. Um, it's very light bodied, but actually some pretty big flavors going on in there. It's a shandy that has a little bit of evolution to the flavor, which is kind of unique. As I said, a lot of shandies and rattlers are often simpler beers like pilsners and lagers with a grapefruit soda or a lemonade added. Um, in this case, there actually is a little bit of an evolution of flavor to it. You start out with, I'm pretty sure this is based on a pilsner. Um, 
with a little bit more of that, that bready type flavor. And then the, the lemon zest kind of comes in and it's a pretty intense lemon and kind of takes over the rest of the flavor from there. But then you're left with like this multi sweetness on the back end that just perfectly complements it. That is really good. It's about time Kansas got something right.